ever wondered how to use Git commands effectively? Git, my friends, is a cornerstone of modern software development. It's more than just a tool. It's the backbone that holds your code base together, enabling collaboration, version control, and so much more. Imagine a bustling city with countless buildings, streets, and alleyways. That's your code base. Now Git. It's like your GPS helping you navigate through this complex city. And the Git commands? They are your controls, your steering wheel, your accelerator, and your brakes. These commands help you manage and navigate your code base, allowing you to add new code, modify existing code, and even revert back to previous versions if necessary. They let you keep track of changes, resolve conflicts, and collaborate effectively with your team. In the next few minutes, we will delve deeper into some of these commands and how to use them effectively. So buckle up, let's take this exciting journey together. The first step in using Git is either initializing a new repository or cloning an existing one. Let's break down both of these tasks. Git init is the command used to create a new, empty repository. The term init is short for initialize. When you run git init, git creates a new subdirectory named .git that contains all the necessary metadata for the new repository. This metadata includes subdirectories for objects, refs, and template files. Now onto git clone. This command is used to create a copy of an existing repository. Unlike git init, which starts from scratch, git clone essentially takes a snapshot of all the data that the current repository has. This includes not just code, but also version history, branches and settings. So to summarize, git init is for starting fresh, while git clone is for working with something that already exists. With just these two commands, we've already set up our repository. Next, let's see how to make changes. Once you've made some changes to your code, it's time to save them. Enter git add. This command is your first step in recording changes. It tells git, hey, I've made some modifications here that I'd like to keep. Whether you've created new files or altered existing ones, git add stages those changes, preparing them for the next step. But what is this next step? Well, it's git commit. Think of git commit as the director yelling, cut, print it. It takes your stage changes and saves them to your project history, but there's a twist. To keep things organized, git commit requires a message. This is your chance to describe what you've done. It's not just a note to your future self, but to anyone else who may work on the project. So be clear, be concise, and most importantly, be relevant. Now we know how to record the changes, but what if we want to check the history? A git provides commands to keep track of our project's history and the current state. One such command is git log. It's like a time machine, enabling us to view the commit history. When you run git log, it lists out all the commits made to the repository in reverse chronological order, displaying the author, date, and commit message for each. This is incredibly helpful when you need to review changes or find a specific commit. Moving on, git status is another powerful command, acting like a mirror to reflect the current state of our repository. When you type git status, it shows which files have changes that are staged for the next commit and which files have changes that are not staged. It's a great way to ensure we're on the right track and nothing has been missed. With these commands, we can always stay updated about our project's status. Let's quickly recap what we've learned so far. We dove into the world of Git and explored the power of six key commands. Git init, the command that kickstarts your coding journey by creating a new Git repository. Git clone, your best friend when you want to get a copy of an existing repository. We then moved on to git add, the command that helps stage your changes and prepare them for a commit. Speaking of commits, git commit is the command that saves your changes to the local repository. Remember, it's like taking a snapshot of your project at a point in time. Finally, we tackled git log, which shows a list of all the commits you have made, and git status, your go-to command to check the status of your files. With these basic Git commands, you're ready to effectively manage your code and contribute to projects. Remember, practice makes perfect, so keep coding and using Git.